Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the synthesis of 3-epi hypatulin B. This work was uploaded to Chem Archive and was carried out by the group of Matthias Christmann at the Free University of Berlin. Hypatulin B was first discovered in 2016 by Tanaka et al from the leaves of the Hypericum patulum plant. These compounds are members of the polycyclic polyprenylated acylfluoroglucinol family of meroterpenoids. Preliminary screening of these compounds shows that hypatulin A has promising antibacterial activity. Analysis of their structure suggests that hypatulin B can easily be transformed into the more bioactive hypatulin A. This structural analysis reveals several challenges for the synthesis of these compounds. The most obvious is the bicyclo 321 octane motif, which contains six contiguous stereocenters, three of which are quaternary. In addition, it features three prenyl groups, which are the signature of the polycyclic polyprenylated family of compounds. So let's look at the retrosynthesis. The first disconnections occur at the prenyl groups and the methyl ester. The prenyl groups could be installed using olefin metathesis, while the methyl ester could be introduced using oxidative cleavage of a methoxyaline. This methoxyaline will be introduced using the selective alkylation of a diketone, which in turn will be installed using the oxidation of an alcohol. This alcohol will be formed by the aldol addition of a silol enol ether used to form the bicyclic framework. The aldehyde necessary for this will be introduced using the reduction of an ester, and one of the alkenes necessary for the olefin metathesis will be introduced using a saccharide reaction. Simple alkylation would introduce another of these alkenes, and carboxylation using Manders reagent would furnish the desired ester. The enone pendant group could be generated using the elimination of an aldol product and deprotection of the masked ketone. This leads back to a simple silal enol ether, which in turn will be generated from a monocyclic ketone bearing a pendant allyl group. So let's start with the synthesis. The silal enol ether was formed using TMS chloride, which first silylates the ketone and triethylamine deprotonates the alpha position to form the alkene in a 94% yield. This occurs on the more substituted site, as this is the more thermodynamically stable product. This was then used in the Mukayama aldol addition. Boron trifluoride was used as a Lewis acid to promote this reaction and first coordinates to the aldehyde making it more electrophilic and allowing the enol ether to attack. This formed the target aldol product in a 91% yield with a 3 to 2 mixture of diastereomers, as there was little control observed from the pendant allyl group. The structure of the R enantiomer could be proved by extra crystallography, which confirms its stereochemistry. Taking the target S enantiomer forward, a reaction with tosylic acid promoted the elimination of the alpha hydroxyl group to produce the enone in a 92% yield. With this now complete, the researchers then turned their attention to functionalizing the other alpha position of the ketone. This was first deprotonated using sodium HMDS, and the enolate was then reacted with allyl iodide. This occurred from the top phase of the ring, as the more sterically demanding phenyl enone blocks the bottom phase. This alpha position was once again deprotonated with sodium HMDS, and this time was reacted with Manders reagent. This added to the carbonyl and formed the target methyl ester upon the elimination of cyanide. Overall, this produced the difunctionalized alpha position in a 59% yield over two steps. With this allylation now complete, they could then introduce the third and final allyl group. This was done using a Hosomi saccharide reaction. Allyl trimethylsilane was reacted with the compound, together with indium trichloride, which acted as a Lewis acid to activate the enone. The chloride then attacks the TMS group, which eliminates to form a ketone and neutralize the secondary cation. The enolate intermediate formed by this reaction was then trapped using TMS chloride, and the reaction reduced the target in a 63% yield with a 2 to 1 DR. This stereoselectivity likely arises from the adjacent methyl group, which would block one phase of the enone. This saccharide reaction works due to the beta-silicon effect. 
This effect stabilizes cations in the beta position relative to the silicon atom. This is due to the hyperconjugation that can occur between the carbon-silicon bond, which is adjacent to the empty p orbital on the cation. This stabilizes this charge and increases the nucleophilicity of the alkene. So with the allylation of the molecule now complete, they then turn their attention towards constructing the bicyclic framework. The methyl ester was first reduced using dibal. By carrying out this reaction at minus 100 degrees Celsius, they could selectively obtain the aldehyde without overreaction to the alcohol, which they observed when higher temperatures were used. This aldehyde served as the electrophile for another Mukayama aldol addition. Boron trifluoride was again used as the catalyst, and this activated the aldehyde and allowed the silyl enol ether to attack it. This was successful in forming the target bicyclo 321 octane framework and produced an alcohol beta to the ketone. This was taken forward without purification and was oxidized using DMP. The hydroxyl group first attacks the hypervalent iodine and eliminates a molecule of acetate. This then acts as a base to deprotonate the molecule which forms the target carbonyl group with a 62% yield obtained over three steps. The structure of this product could be confirmed using X-ray crystallography. With this compound in hand, they then undertook the methoxyalenylation. In order to obtain selectivity for the target carbonyl group, they first reacted the molecule with sodium HMDS. This deprotonated the most acidic proton, which is alpha, to the two other carbonyl groups present. This deprotonation reduces the electrophilicity of these two positions and ensures reactivity at the target site. They then reacted the molecule with methoxyalenyl lithium. This was successful in attacking the target carbonyl and producing the product in a 72% yield. However, they only observed attack on the top face of the molecule. After screening a range of reaction conditions and a range of different nucleophiles, they discovered that they could only ever obtain reaction at the top face of the molecule, as the bottom face is likely too hindered. It is for this reason they obtained the 3 epi product, and not their initial target, which was the natural form of hypatulin B. They pressed on with this compound, and subjected it to an oxidative cleavage using singlet oxygen. This acts as an electrophile, and is attacked by the allene, forming a peroxide intermediate, which then attacks the carbonyl, forming a five-membered peroxide bridge. This then fragments, forming the target methyl ester, on the elimination of ethenone. This reaction proved to be troublesome, as it required a long reaction time of 26 hours to produce a 61% yield when carried out on the 10 mg scale. Attempts to increase this batch size proved to be difficult, so instead they utilised flow chemistry and were able to obtain the product in a 64% yield, this time in just one hour on the 56 mg scale. Flow chemistry works by passing reactants through thin tubes and reacting them as they flow, unlike more typical conditions where all the reactants are placed in one single vessel and reacted simultaneously in batch. In this reaction, they introduce oxygen gas into the flow system together with a substrate, along with tetraphenyl porphyrin, which acts as a photosensitizer. Upon a radiation with light at 420 nanometers, this TPP is activated and generates the singlet oxygen from the oxygen gas. This then reacts with the molecule and the product was collected at the end of the flow system. With the ester now installed, they then turned to installing the prenyl groups to complete the synthesis. This was done using alkene metastasis with Hoveda Grubb's second generation catalyst. This catalyst first undergoes activation. This catalyst first undergoes activation by a reaction with 2-methylpropene. This reacts with the carbene bonded to the metal centre and forms a cyclic four-membered intermediate. This fragments and eliminates the isopropoxystyrene ligand and produces a propene carbene bonded to the ruthenium centre. It is this carbene that then reacts with the substrate. As before, it forms a four-membered cyclic intermediate, which then fragments and completes the metastasis, producing the target 3 epihypatulin B with all three prenyl groups now installed. The catalyst is once again regenerated by a reaction with 2-methylpropene by undergoing another metastasis reaction. The product of this reaction is ethene, which is a volatile gas and is lost from the reaction mixture. It is this loss of ethene 
that drives the reaction forward. So with that, they completed the synthesis of 3 epi hypatulin B. While not their initial target, this synthesis develops a lot of interesting chemistry, and in particular, highlights the benefits of using flow chemistry in the reactions of singlet oxygen. In the next video, we will look at the total synthesis of scabrolide A.